Hello, N4H&H here. This is the next video in the Yesu FT710 AESS series. And the subject of this video was prompted by a question that I received through a comment uh, on the channel here. I do actually try to respond to comments. I, I can't always. Uh, sometimes it's overwhelming because um, you know, I need to make a living as well. But, um, you know, if I get enough support for this channel that I can dedicate my time completely to this, then that would be great. And I can focus more on answering more questions. But uh, I'm going to answer this question because it's a very good question. What type of DSP chip does the FT710 have? Uh, for example, is it the same as what's in the FTDX10? Because they're so similar. The menu system, the look. It's very, very similar. And Yesu said that the FT710 AESS is positioned as the little brother to the FTDX10, similar to how the FTDX1200 was the little brother to the FTDX3000D. They looked a lot alike, but there were definite differences internally. And that's the case with the FT710 in a couple of areas. Primarily, uh, as we discovered in uh, one of the previous videos, looking at the block diagram, the FT710A ESS is indeed a pure SDR. I speculated that in video number one of this series, and it was proved out when the sales brochure was released. So, you know, in, in case you haven't looked through the sales brochure, I covered uh, that in, uh, in that block diagram video because that's where we found the receiver block diagram, and we focused all about that. Well, this time, same brochure, but we're going to be taking a look at the DSP chip. Now, before I dig into that, I want to give you a little bit of a backdrop about Yesu's use of DSP chips. We'll, we'll go back to 2009, the FTDX5000. So let me, let me shrink myself down here so you can see what I want you to see. Okay, so look in the middle of, of the display there, and you're going to see a D, DSP chip. That's a Texas Instruments uh, chip. You can uh, Maybe you can see the little outline there of Texas. And that is chip uh, part number TMS320C6727B. And then there's a few other descriptors that aren't as important. Um, that chip operates at 300 megahertz. That's the clock speed. Tremendous DSP application. So I'll give you a quick synopsis. I've, I've talked about this in earlier videos. The, I, w I had gone 20 years without upgrading uh, my HF base station. So I went into our local radio shop here, and they have a, a bench set up so you can use switches and switch between the radios, switch between the antennas. So what I did was I used the exact same, same antenna and um, found different types of stations, different modes, and I tried all the radios. And actually, it wound up being a, an eight-month expedition. So it was uh, quite something. They were they were clapping for me when I finally chose a radio eight months later. But while I, when I was doing that, and I, by the way, I did not walk in to buy a Yesu. I had my you know my uh, mindset on a completely different uh, brand radio. And uh, I, you know, eight months later, I walked out with a Yesu. What happened was, you know, I, I'm trying to pull out weak signals, and I'm trying to uh, deal with noise. And at that particular store, it's in an industrial area, and so it's inundated with noise. And I kept going back to that 5,000 no matter what I tried. Now, I waited on the FTDX 101D and the MP to come out, put them up against the 5,000, and uh, they were neck to neck. They really were. So what I found out was... Um, I liked the ergonomics better of the 5000. I liked the bigger radio, so there was more room for knobs and buttons. And, and I wasn't all that attracted to the color waterfall, so that didn't mean as much to me. And, uh, you know, funny thing, too, it probably will be the last radio made with an actual de Arsenval movement meter, that is, a you know, a, an actual needle. But, I mean, that doesn't really matter, but I just thought, well, that's a nostalgic thing. But, uh, you know, I was really looking for performance and then also to the ease of use, which, you know, ergonomics is a is a big part of that. But the the one of the big deciding factors for me at the time was the DSP, the FTDX 101's DSP. Well, I even said it. I said, wow, this is the flagship of the fleet and the DSP is no better than my FT891, my mobile. Well, turns out they actually use the same chip. I'll show you that chip in a moment. Um 
And so the, uh, for example, the DNR algorithm still had that underwater type sound. I, I was a little disappointed in that. Well, the 5000 did doesn't matter. Like now with um, with the FT891, 991A, I always tell you to put the, D, uh, the DNR, digital noise reduction, on algorithm 9. Don't use 1 through 8. They're just no good. Algorithm 9, it finally starts to clear up and not sound like somebody's underwater. But with the FTDX 5000 I was testing, it didn't matter if you were on algorithm 1 or 15. They never sounded like they were underwater. It was the best DSP I'd ever heard. So I was a little disappointed in that aspect of the FTDX 101. And so, long story short, walked out with a 5000 MP and have never regretted that. So, again, this DSP chip was also used in the FTDX 1200, the FTDX 3000D, and, of course, this five, the 5000. And it runs at 300 megahertz. That's the clock speed. So now let's move forward to uh, we're going to look at the FTDX10 brochure. And over here on the right, you'll see its chip. OK, yep. And that is the TMS320C6746. Remember, the 5000 was the 6727B. This is the 6746. Same chip used in FT891, used in FT991A, FTDX101D and MP, and also in the FTDX10. But here's something interesting. When I got my hands on an FTDX10, turned it on, of course, one of the first things I go to is, is DSP, and particularly DNR, and I was astonished. It was rivaling my FTDX 5000 MP. And I said, wow, what's the deal? Because it's using the same chip. The 101 has the same chip. So, you know, what I want you to get from that is to know this. You can't just go by the chip uh, part number and go, well, this radio is going to have better uh, DSP than the other one uh, that, or another particular radio. Because you also have the, the, the programming that goes into that. You know, there's more to it than just the chip itself. So uh, that was definitely the case. And now what happened was a few months later, Yesu released an update for the FTDX 101 D and MP and uh, put it up to the same level as the DSP and the FTDX 10. So thank, uh, thank you for that, Yesu. Now, you, uh, th this one you may notice here in center of the screen, this chip's clock speed is 368.64 megahertz. So you know, a little faster than the one in the uh, FTDX 5000 MP. But again, in practical use for me, I don't, not a lab test, okay? On the air, listening to the same stations, can I pull them out? Um, 5000, you've seen it in previous videos where I've put the 10 and the 5000 against one another neck to neck. But that is the chip that is in the FTDX 10, the FTDX 101D MP and the 991A and 891, I probably missed one. All right, so now let's take a look at the brochure for the FT710 AESS. Over here, bottom left, make sure you can see it. Yes. Okay, so that is the an NXP chip. So Yesu has uh, taken a departure from the Texas Instruments world with this radio. It is uh, NXP semiconductors. The model number there, the part number for the chip is MRT6. 85 Sierra Foxtrot Victor SFV MRT 685 SFV now you're still going to have the same familiar what we're all accustomed to seeing these days you're going to have shift width notch contour audio peak filter DNR digital noise reduction and noise blanker handled by that uh, DSP chip now the, the display is going to be a little bit different if you look down like here to the right of the chip um, it's very similar to what you see in the FTDX10, but a slight different color system here and a little different layout as you work with each of those um, uh, parameters for the DSP chip. But, you know, essentially you've got the same uh, features that you have in the FTDX10. Now, as soon as I get an FT710 AESS in here, I'm going to do some comparisons between it and the uh, FTDX 10 with actual on air, you know, you know what I like to do. I like just get out there and try to chase a QRP station, pull them up out of the weeds and, uh, and see how it fares in those kind of conditions. So, um, I'll, I won't do lab test. I will do on air comparisons and we'll see how this NXP, uh, chip and, and for that matter, the programming, uh, holds up against the FTDX 10. 
Now, Mr. Sherwood, and you you probably saw this in the previous video, uh, Rob Sherwood tested the FT-710 in his lab for the, uh, he, he does a test where he, he checks to see um, the dynamic range of the radio when you've got an inf interfering signal two kilohertz away. So you're trying to receive a weak signal, in fact, and a strong signal moves in two kilohertz away. He t tests for the radio's ability to still be able to pull out that weak signal. Now, if you come home, and I said this before, if you come home and rag chew with friends on 75 meters, that's not going to be that important to you. But if you chase rare DX, contesting, emergency band conditions where the bands are crowded, that will come into play. Now, the way I look at it, if for a few dollars more you can get a radio that is that can do that too, uh, why not? Because then, even if all you do now is come home and rag chew, uh, maybe in the future your operating style might change, or we may have an emergency where that uh, that ability to separate the signal you want to hear from the ones that are you know two kilohertz away will come into play and it will be important to you. So for a few dollars more, I would go for the radio that basically can do it all. So uh, and and you saw in that list, Mr. Sherwood uh, in his lab test put the FT710 one notch below the ft dx10 they were they were very very neck to neck they were just a couple of categories that caused the ft710 to slip in just below the ft dx10 but to put that in perspective if you go to his list now by the way in the previous video my my uh, display was cut off on the right hand side so i know you, you guys didn't see the last two columns i was looking at but i was still giving you the information verbally and i hope you were following along because i gave you the uh, web address it's S-H-E-R-W-E-N-G dot com slash the word table, T-A-B-L-E. So S-H-E-R-W-E-N-G dot com slash table. But again, that's not the subject of this video. I just wanted you to know um, that be because of his lab test, the 710 slips in there above $17,000 radio, $14,000 radio, uh, well, every every other radio there is. Number one is the FTDX101D slash MP. Uh, number two, once you factor in the footnote Y for the, F, for the Flex 6700, number two is actually the FTDX10, and then therefore number three is the FT710AESS. So Yesu is, uh, they got to be proud of themselves right now. And I have to say, um, you know, I don't work for Yesu. We've had our differences. We don't always get along on, um, and agree on things. Um, when I've had, you know, just I, not that they care. They don't even ask me anything. But when I've had a conversation with them and, and I've offered some constructive criticism, um, it's not always well received. I mean, I'm just going to tell you the straight scoop. You know how my channel is, guys, good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm, I, I, since I'm not sponsored by anybody, I don't have to hold back. Uh, I am sponsored. I'm sponsored by a team of Patreon supporters, and if you join that team, you can help out. It keeps me from having to uh, hold back. But um, And that is www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. So join that team if you would, and help me keep bringing you this type of uh, content. But uh, back to the radio. So the FT710 is sitting third on that list when you factor in the... Um, the, uh, the little footnote Y for the Flex 6700. And so, uh, and all right, so I brought that up twice. I should explain if you didn't watch the previous video. The 6700 production models uh, really belong down below even 10th on the list. So, um, the one that was sent for, to him for, to test apparently had been um, modified for the test. I don't want to accuse anybody of anything, but, I mean, let's just face it. You go out and buy one, you're not going to get the, the 108 dB number that it displayed in his test um, because he was running one particular type of test. You can imagine that you could condition a radio, if you knew ahead of time, to pass that test, though it may fail or fall a little bit short somewhere else with a different test, like sensitivity or something like that. So when you factor all that in, the 710 sits at number three above radios costing as much as $17,000. And at $1,299.95, the introductory price, including the external speaker you see over here on the right, that's just phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. So um, different chip NXP semiconductors. Yesu has departed from the uh, Texas Instruments 
realm for the FT-710. We could speculate. Who knows? It's It may be they've discovered a chip they like better, or maybe this one's a little bit less expensive because, let's face it, the 710 is, I mean, everybody thinks so. It's going head-to-head -head with the 7300 from ICOM. So, uh, you know, they were probably trying to find ways to uh, cut corners anyway. I mean, and I say cut corners. I don't mean to diminish the quality of the radio. But let's say build the best radio for the money and keep the price point to where this could be, and I believe it will be, the, uh, the greatest entry-level um, HF transceiver that we will have ever seen. And for that matter, when I say entry-level, you know, with numbers like it's got right now, it could take you, you could use it uh, potentially the rest of your life. I mean, is uh, you know, the only thing you could do better is maybe start looking into something like a dual receive, uh, which is the FTDX101D or the MP. So, hey, I hope you found the video helpful and informative. As always, this is N4H&H thanking you for watching. If you would, uh, give the video a like, click that thumbs up, consider uh, subscribing to the channel. And if you do subscribe, click the notification bell so you won't miss another video. I do intend to carry this series on. Uh, like I said, when I get an FT710 AESS here in the shack, I will continue this series with some hands-on operating. And, uh, you know, we'll unbox it, get it on the air. We'll go through it just like I did the FTDX10. So uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Click that notification bell. Ring that bell so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And then also, if you would, please share this video, the, share the link to this video on social media, um, email, text message, phone a friend. Hey, thanks for watching and 73 from N4 HNH.